Are you a PhD, postdoc, or MD interested in transitioning into management consulting? Apply to Link to LEK by March 12th, 2023. What is Link to LEK? Well, it's an opportunity for advanced degree students to get to know LEK and the type of strategy consulting work the firm does through a virtual two-day program. During the program, you'll network with LEK consultants and participate in a simulated strategy case modeled after the work done by LEK's life sciences team. But the best part of the program, you will receive the opportunity to an early interview for a full-time role with the firm ahead of the general recruiting cycle. Again, the program is open to current PhD, postdoc, or MD students interested in life sciences strategy consulting, ideally with a target graduation in 2024. So again, apply by March 12th. Click the link in the show notes or visit lek.com today to submit your application. Hi, my name's Edward, and I'm going to be pursuing a career in consulting upon graduation. As an intern for Management Consulted, I would love it if you were able to fill out a quick survey linked in the show note description. This is going to help Strategy Simplified improve and become far more tailored to you, the individual, looking for a career in consulting. Thank you. Hey, Strategy Simplified. I'm excited to bring you this conversation with Eric Liu, a junior at Duke University. Eric is pursuing a major in biology, but decided that he wanted to pursue consulting because he loves business. In this episode, he shares the strategy and the tips and tricks he used to break into EY Parthenon. It's a quick, fun, and insightful conversation. Let's dive right in. Eric Liu, welcome to Strategy Simplified. We're excited to have you on the podcast today. Yeah, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Love to come back. I was here, I think, about two months ago, but um, love to have the opportunity to come back again. Absolutely, a, a repeat guest. Uh, Eric, where are, you, where are you calling in from today? Yeah, um, so I go to Duke University, so I'm currently in Durham, North Carolina. It's surprisingly chilly right now, but that's kind of what you expect, I think, in uh, late November. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, for the podcast listeners, you won't be able to see this, but he's got a big puffy jacket on. Uh, so if that helps you get more into the, the mood of, of today's recording. Um, well, Eric, uh, let's just continue this this introduction. Can you share a little bit more about who you are, uh, where you're from, what's your background? Yeah. So um, basically, raised in North Carolina, I currently go to Duke University. I'm a junior at Duke University. Um, I'm majoring in uh, biology, so not exactly a traditional path to consulting, but recently, the past couple months, I decided to start recruiting for consulting. And um, a month ago, I received an offer, accepted an offer at EY Parthenon for a summer associate position in the Boston office. So really excited about this opportunity coming up um, this next summer and definitely just want to give any advice, talk about my process as well. Sweet. Well, that's exciting. And so you talked about you have a biology background. What prompted the 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 desire to go into consulting? Mm-hmm. So um, to clarify a little bit, I have a, I'm a biology major, but I'm a minor in econ. So I kind of wanted to incorporate both my passion for biology and economics. And the more I started doing um, consulting prep work, I realized, you know, I don't necessarily want to go down a healthcare field or a biology field per se, but rather really focus on the business side of things because I really found a passion in doing these like cases, for example. So the more I sort of dived into it, the more I realized that I think where my future lay is more in the consulting business side of things. Absolutely. Uh, now at EY Parthenon, uh, do you know if, if you'll be involved in some of the, the healthcare right. side of, of consulting or or do you, do, you, do you not know that yet? Um, we haven't been assigned our, pro- assigned our projects yet, but um, Definitely there, you know, healthcare consulting is a big part of, I think, just the consulting field as a whole. So I feel like there definitely would be some opportunities if I do decide to pursue it. Absolutely. Good to combine a little bit of, of both your your passions there. Isn't, yeah. Um, okay. Well, well, can you just kind of take a step back and provide kind of a high level overview of of your journey into UA Parthenon, just kind of the major stops along the way, you know, maybe starting from uh, when you first started pursuing it, leading up to receiving the offer, and then we'll we'll go back and dive into a few of the more specific pieces of that journey. Sure. Yeah. So, um, to be honest, I really considered like before 
this path, I really considered going to med school. And it wasn't until around spring break of um, last semester, so I would say around late March, that I considered switching to something else, maybe like consulting. So I talked to older people at Duke, um, current full-time first-year associates at different firms, and they all told me consulting was a great path to go down. But I didn't really start prepping for cases or really understand what consulting was until after my school year ended, and that was around May. So after my school year ended, I really started just diving into case practice. And at first I was watching YouTube videos, whether it's on management consulted or just, you know, there's hundreds of YouTube videos out there or just reading cases from case books. And eventually I got pretty good at it to this sense by like, I felt like by August, you know, two or three months, um, if I was given an interview, I, I felt like I had a decent shot at doing well in the interview. At the same time though, um, definitely the networking process I would say is really important. Um, I was fortunate enough to know a lot of people already in consulting, which might not be the case for a lot of people, but I was able to reach out to them and they connected me with others they knew as well. And just having sort of people that, you know, not only in terms of like potentially getting an interview, but just also understanding what their job is actually about and what their firm is actually about as well. Because I feel like all these different firms, whether it's like McKinsey or, um, you know, PwC or UI Python, they, they all have different parts that they're really specialized in. And, um, for me, at least, I, I worked at a VC firm this past summer, and I really enjoyed doing the due diligence work that the VC firm did. And I know that Parthenon, one of their best practices in their private equity practice, and you do a lot of due diligence there. And that's what really drew me to Parthenon. Um, so yeah, I applied. Most of the applications were either in August or September. Uh, applied to those and was fortunate enough to receive an interview to UI Parthenon. Um, they actually had one round of interview this year, and it was an in-person super day. Um, Mine was in Chicago and um, flew out there. It was a one day interview. Like, I think there was three interviews and a week or maybe four or five days later, I got the offer. So that's basically sort of a brief timeline of what my process was like. Man, uh, thanks for sharing the, the timeline. And so you had a, a super day. You said there was about three interviews. Uh, can you just, let's just dive right into that. Um, can you share more about uh, about what those interviews were kind of who was interviewing you, just more of kind of the, the, the tact tactical details of, of what that day was like for you. Mm -hmm. So what they did, at least I think what UI Parthenon did was fly all of us from Duke who had a super day interview in the same, in the same time slot. So it was kind of weird. We we're just waiting in the lobby and it was like 15 other Duke kids. And I like knew like a lot of them too. And we're like, oh wow, like you're here too. So, and then we went up to their office and um, so yeah, in regards to these three interviews, one was a behavioral interview and then two were case interviews. Um, and I would say the behavioral was honestly one of the best interviews I've had. Um, they were partners. Uh, surprisingly, they were, uh, I think behavioral was a partner. So he was a partner from the Dallas office. He flew from the Dallas office up to Chicago. And we really just talked a little bit about my resume, but really just about how life was. I recently gone to actually Madrid for fall break and we really just bonded over that. In terms of the cases, um, they were pretty long cases, I would say. All mo all the interviews were between 45 to 50 minutes. And um, as a result, you know, it's not exactly like two or three part cases you might see in some case books, but rather they were like six or seven parts and definitely very math heavy. Um, and um, but for the most part, the people that interviewed me for the cases, they were either like uh, vice presidents or directors sort of that level. I think there's definitely different titles for every firm, but it was around that level. And um, they're all very friendly. It didn't seem like sort of they're trying to get you to fail and they're trying to get you to, they okay. actually wanted you to succeed. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned the kind of the human connection you formed in that behavioral interview. Uh, how, how big a part do you think that plays? They, you know, more the human element versus when a lot of folks are, are prepping for cases, they can tend to turn into robots and just try to rem memorize all the right answers and say all the right things and, you know, hope that, hope that, you know, they get the job. <laughs> but how important is the, is the human kind of connection element in that? Mm -hmm. That was actually something really important, I think, at least for Parthenon. I, before my Super Day, I had talked to some people who had gotten the Parthenon offer last year who were, who had done the internship. And they, the one thing they stressed was, Parthenon really cares about the culture in their office. And as a result, like they were like obviously doing the case and excelling in the case is really important, but also just being a person they actually want to work with is also really important. So I think one of the biggest things is you 
you are nervous when you go into the interview. Uh, it's sort of kind of hard not to be nervous. You have so much at stake there, but you, you just try to be natural because at the end of the day, they might be partners, they might be head of an office, but they're still people. They're, you know, they might be 30 years old, they might be 40 years old, they might be 50 years old, but they, they want you to succeed. I think that's the biggest thing. And not really just not trying to be a robot, don't try to memorize anything going ahead into it and have sort of like an open mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, we're all humans <laughs> and we want to connect with humans, not just not robots. Um, I, I love that, Eric. Now, c can we take a little step back and, and focus in on your case interview prep? Uh, you mentioned it was roughly three to four months from the time you started till you till you felt really comfortable if you had got if you were to receive an interview invite. Um, so can you go into that a little bit? Share a couple of resources that were helpful in that process. Uh, share what was important for you to be able to succeed and to really uh, develop and can get better in the in the case interviews. Mm -hmm. So the way I would almost describe a case interview is I would think of it almost like a dance where. There's certain steps you have to hit. For example, you know, like after the introduction, you probably have to ask some clarifying questions. You probably have to have some framework. Uh, and then there's probably some math and some sort of qualitative reasoning as well. So one of the first things that I've done was just watch people do cases. Um, a lot of it, honestly, was in the management consulting YouTube where you guys have done so many mock cases with um, a lot of other candidates as well. But then after that, you actually have to start doing some cases yourself. And um, there's great resources all over the internet on these um, case books, or you can, I guess you can buy some cases as well, where in, where you can like do cases with friends or partners. I was lucky enough where I was in the same situation as three or four of my really good friends, and they were also um, prepping for consulting recruitment. And we really just prepped each other like once a day, or we tried to do it once a day sometimes. It was like, we were kind of lazy, but like over the summer, at least we got to the case where we were doing like maybe a total of like 30 to 40 cases by the end of the summer. And at that point, everything seems really natural for you. You're never like questioning, like, um, what should I do next? That's like some of the big, that's, that, that was honestly one of my biggest fears was like, what if I go into an interview and there's just silence and I don't know what to do next. That's... But after you do like 30 or 40 cases, that's not going to be the case anymore. <laughs> so at some point you stopped. Uh, just watching it and passively observing, and you started mm -hmm. participating actively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I that... mean, I I do have to clarify. Even when I was, I guess, passively observing, I was still like, I paused it when like, you know, the interviewer, like for example, as we consulted one of if the interviewer like was like, oh, like this is the prompt, like, and then I would pause it and I would write down my own sort of um sort of like frameworks as well before I continued and see if like the candidate's framework kind of matched mine. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so you were you were smart in that you like actually did it uh, uh, alongside the candidate. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you know, a lot of the the mistakes that we see with with people in this process is that they think they can just read cases or, or watch videos of people casing and that will get them better. But <laughs> it's a painful experience if you're in your first case interview and you realize, oh, I I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's Honestly, sort of like a, it's the worst case scenario, but I mean, you'll learn. We'll be right back after this quick break. How much do management consultants get paid? How much should you expect to make in consulting? The answers lie in Management Consultants 2023 Consulting Salaries Report. Get detailed compensation data like base salary, bonuses, relocation, PTO, and much more. You'll get all this data for 90 plus consulting firms. Did we mention that it's completely free? Download the report today. There's a link in the show notes to do so. And you can figure out for yourself what you could make in consulting this year. Is there is there one or one or two things or resources that, that made the difference for you to be able to to go from kind of good to to ready? Good mm -hmm. to great? Um I've always kind of been pretty confident in my math skills. I feel like that's something that a lot of people might have struggled with initially. Um, but like I like with the mental math and stuff, I thought I was pretty good. The only issues sometimes I had with math was maybe some of these word problems. Again, I'm sort of like a bio major. I've never really done more of these 
I know they're not exactly econ problems, but they're more like, you know, profitability questions. But just understanding the terminology was important. Once I understood it, it became a lot easier. And then for frameworks, there's just certain things that certain like buzzwords you you almost hear in the prompt that you could kind of sort of already jot down what kind of framework you kind of want before they even ask for the framework. So I think those are two two of the main things that have helped me sort of improve a lot. Tips and tricks from Eric Liu. I love it. Uh, so Eric, question, if you had to go back and start the, the whole recruitment process all over again, uh, is what would you, you tell yourself or, or is there anything that you would do differently? Just, just go back and maybe speak to someone who's hasn't started yet or is it at the, the beginning stages of their process? If you sat down, had a coffee, what would you, what would you tell them? Um, I, I honestly would have maybe started sooner. Um, not in terms of the case prep, but maybe in terms of the networking process. Um, I didn't really start networking until after school ended, but you know, networking really isn't just a phone call and like, Hey, can you put in a word for me? It's more of actually building a long-term relationship with someone. And, um, for me, I maybe, maybe I would have reached out to more like two alumni or people that I knew in, um, March or February instead of early June. Uh, that, that would be sort of the biggest thing that would have changed. So start early. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, can you quickly go into your networking a little bit? Um, what are the kinds of people you talk to? Did you hop on a phone call or a zoom call? What were the questions you asked? Did you ask for referrals? Kind of go into that? Yeah, sure. Um, so in terms of the networking process, um, I was like a lot of cold LinkedIn sort of messages, a lot of uh, Duke, Duke has sort of like their alumni database, just emailing alumni, just, you know, hey, my name is Eric. Um, I'm a, you know, rising junior at Duke, looking to go into consulting, really interested in X firm. Would love to have chat with you if you have the time. And in terms of the actual call, it's usually like 30 minutes, um, usually like a phone call, maybe sometimes a Zoom call, but these people are pretty busy. They don't exactly want to hop on a Zoom. They're either like, you know, going back to work and just calling you or something. And in terms of the actual call, um, at first, my, maybe my first three or four calls, I wrote down questions. I like, you know, looked at their LinkedIn page, um, wrote down specific questions. But at the end, I kind of just, it was more of like a conversation. I didn't really, I, I knew what like sort of project they were on, but it was more off their responses. And it was a lot more natural than I felt like my first couple of calls. And then asking for a referral, um, I never asked for a referral per se, because I feel like that could go either way. You know, it could really turn someone off if um, you, you're too straightforward. But at the same time, I would definitely hint towards like, you know, um, being like, if there's any way to help me out, I would love, I would appreciate any help they can get. Like that, that could be like an example statement that I would say, but I would never straight away ask for a referral just because I feel like that's a little bit too blunt. But that that's just my opinion. Things... Um, there's, I feel like there's no correct answer in terms yeah. of that regard. That absolutely. But I like that. I think there's no correct answer. It just depends on people's situations. Um, but, but the important thing is that you did it. <laughs> you, you did, you networked and you, you got to know people, you got to know the culture of the firms. Um, and you probably wouldn't have, you wouldn't be in your shoes now if you hadn't uh, gone through that work and, and put in the effort there. Mm -hmm. I would definitely um, agree. Yeah. Cool. Uh, any, any last advice or wisdom for aspiring consultants? Um, I would just say at least for, I can't really speak to maybe higher ups, but if you're searching for an internship or full-time offer, I would really just cast my net pretty wide, just apply to a lot of things because just, you just don't know which ones you'll end up getting an interview for or eventually getting an offer for. Um, it's just like, it really is a crapshoot of who gets the interview and sometimes who gets the offer as well. So you really just have to throw your chances out there and it's really competitive these days. So, um, just give yourself as many opportunities as possible. I think is really smart. I love that. Appreciate that, Eric. Uh, you heard it here from man, man himself. Um, well, Eric, uh, you started at, at Iwe Parthenon at, you know, at summer 2023. What are one or two things that you're really looking forward to, uh, that summer? Yeah, so um, UI Parthenon actually flew us out to an office visit, I think last week or two weeks ago. And I was able to see the office, really beautiful office. I'm working in the Boston office right on the water. 
really excited to just work with um, and got to meet some of the associates as well. Really excited to work with them alongside the other incoming interns. They all seem like real great people. I was only able to meet them for like an afternoon or an evening. So I most, I'm most excited to just work with them for a whole summer now. Um, also just like the actual work as much like sort of case prep that I've done and as much as like I watched YouTube videos about consulting, I've never actually done consulting before. And I'm really excited to actually do consulting on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, that that's epic. Well, we're excited for you. Uh, we, we're happy to have you on for a, a mock case and then back in, in the summer of 2022. And uh, that went really well. And, and glad we could play some some small part in your journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, thank you guys a lot for having me on in the summer and again today. Absolutely. Uh, well, we're going to transition to the part of the show where we ask you a couple personal fun questions. Um, let's start off... Well, with some travel, uh, what's the top place kind of on your travel bucket list? Yeah, um, so a lot of my friends actually are abroad this semester at, um, for some reason, a lot of juniors at Duke, they go abroad in the fall. Unfortunately, because of class and stuff, I couldn't really go abroad this semester. So really kind of regret go, not going abroad. But one thing that I really want to see um, on my bucket list is definitely the Northern Lights, whether it's either in Alaska or um, Northern Europe. Um, I know that's pretty expensive and uh, pretty time consuming as well. So I don't know exactly when I'll have the time, but hopefully sometime soon. That's awesome. Let me know and uh, I'll see if I can uh, join you. <laughs> that sounds epic. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, well, at, in your time at Duke, Eric, you I know you created a, a club based on blind dates, which is really interesting and, and fun. And, and I'm just super curious about that. So can you share a little bit more about that? And is there a favorite uh, memory or, or moment you have from, from that experience? Mm -hmm. So um, we, me and my um, sort of roommate, we actually created a club at Duke called Dating Devils. The whole concept is matching people up um, on blind dates and all the proceeds goes towards an organization called OneSite who is dedicated towards helping like cure global blindness. Uh, honestly, I think my favorite part of it wasn't even matching people up, although some people might disagree with me. My favorite part was the process of getting it approved, just because it was such a long process and like the actual approval process once we got the stamp of approval. And I know how much sort of hard work I put in, just that validation was really nice. And then, of course, matching people up is also really fun. But that, I, that was a lot more like sort of like a computer algorithm than anything. It wasn't exactly me picking and choosing, hey, I think you should match with another person. So there was less personal involvement there. Wow. Uh, that's awesome. That sounds fun. The, the process of, of creating that and I know it must have been rewarding to, to see that, that approved. That's awesome. Uh, all right. Last question for you, Eric. And this is a new one. The first time we've asked this on the podcast, but uh, when you were a kid, uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? Yeah. Um, I actually wanted to be a pilot when I, was a kid. I still love flying a lot. I love going to these different airports, looking at airplanes. But for me, I thought being a pilot was so cool. Just, you know, you can have free travel everywhere. And, um, you know, it seems like when you're on a plane, you're not really doing much, you know, like even as a pilot, I can't speak, I'm not trying to offend any pilots, but <laughs> you're on autopilot a lot. You're really just like, you know, landing the plane sometimes, but like, yeah. And then I kind of realized that, um, I'm a little bit scared of heights. So maybe being a pilot isn't the thing for me. And I started watching documentaries of these accidents. Oh, so, no. Yeah, that's, that's where sort of my, my pilot dream ended. <laughs> I love that. Uh, that, that. That's a great dream. That's a great dream. Well, thanks for, for sharing both the personal and the, the consulting side of your, your story. Uh, we're happy to have you on Strategy Simplified. Uh, thanks for joining, and we wish you the best of luck at Eway Parthenon and beyond. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, and uh, hope we speak again sometime in, in the future. Absolutely. Did you know that every month we put on a mock case? You can find the date and register for the next one by clicking the link in this episode's show notes. In addition, you can work with our team of expert MBB coaches to prepare for your case and behavioral interviews. The link to see our team and focus session today is in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to another episode of Strategy Simplified.